Welcome to Sinful's Horror Stories. Tonight's video deals with kidnapping stories. I feel like one of our most human fears is the idea of being kidnapped. The idea of being out in the world doing your thing one day and to vanish the next is truly horrifying. I want you guys to sit back, relax, and remember, stay sinful. Story number one. I'm a longtime reader and the stories on here are crazy, harrowing and ultimately powerful because we're all here to tell the tale. I decided to post an experience that my girlfriend had because why not? This happened to her when she was in high school. She was on the school's Nordic ski team and practiced all the time. It's a very demanding sport. Even when there's no snow on the ground, you need to stay in shape by ski running, which is a weird form of jogging and hopping, as if you have skis on. Skating with big specialized rollerblades or simply jogging. Nordic trails are often just trails or paths groomed when there's snow. So she would train on these paths that round around lakes and through woods. One day she's jogging on a trail she's been on dozens of times, not far from her neighborhood. This area is owned by a park system and there is a permanent bathroom building next to the parking lot. She finished her loop and went to go to the bathroom before heading home. Before going in, she saw a guy sitting on a bench that was outside the bathroom, talking on his phone. Immediately she felt something was off about him. It was as if whoever he was talking to on the other end kept interrupting him. He'd say things like, Yeah, I know that's... Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Crazy, that shit. But it didn't sound like he was giving the other person enough time to talk. How was he being interrupted even though he wouldn't pause? Even though we only heard part of what was being said with people on phones, it seemed random. Also, he kept looking around down both ways of the trail. When she walked by him, she could feel his eyes following her to the bathroom. The moment she closed that bathroom door, he stopped talking. He went silent. It was weird how he wasn't pausing, and then BAM, was completely silent. No goodbye or frustrated sounds by dropping the call. By the way, these are those bathrooms that have those little windows cracked, even when it's cold out. One of the windows was on the wall towards the bench. She didn't go to the bathroom but waited for a minute. She heard his footsteps on the gravel as he took what sounded like a few steps closer to the door. He was pretending to talk on the phone. That was it. She braced herself and swung the door open and ran to her car in the parking lot. The only two cars were hers and his. As soon as she started running, he started running behind her. She got into her car, she looked to see, and she noticed that he ran to his car, opened the trunk and pulled out a fucking pickaxe and a rope. What the fuck? She also saw a blue tarp lining the trunk, kind of spilling out because his car was small. He started fast walking to her car. She put the car in reverse, flooring it over the median, onto the grass and onto the main road. She saw him run back and jump into his car, and he backed up too. She started booking it down the road and he followed. She said that she sped up to 100 miles per hour, but he wasn't far behind. Obviously, instead of going home, she took a bunch of random turns. This was in a fairly rural area, so it was difficult to lose him without traffic lights or people. She doesn't remember how long she was driving, probably only a few minutes, when she finally lost him, or he gave up. She drove for hours until dusk, when she decided it was safe to go home. She told her parents, but they never filed a police report, which really bothers me, but I figure they probably thought they wouldn't have enough to go on, even though she got a few good looks at him and his car, but I don't want to press them on it and make them feel guilty. She finished that Nordic ski season going to state finals, the scariest encounter of her life, 
didn't mess up her season. Also, her and I occasionally go on walks on that path if we're in the area, right by that bathroom, because it's a beautiful walk. So fuck you, scary pickaxe guy. You can't take that from us. Story number two. This happened about a year and a half ago, and it was around 2 to 3 a.m. in the Houston area, one of the top cities for human sex trafficking. And this all took place on a weeknight. My friend and I were driving around. We stopped at a Walgreens for something that I can't recall. I got out of the car to go in the store, and I saw a white van sitting outside. At the time, I didn't think anything of this. So, after I make my purchase, I walk back to my friend's car and we leave. As we're driving off the lot, she comments that her tire air pressure seems light, so we needed to stop at an air pump. For whatever reason, we stopped at the most sketchy, secluded gas station to air up and it was closed as well. This was the dumbest decision ever, I know. We both got out of the car to air up the tires, and about a minute passes before I started feeling this rush of intuition, screaming at me that it was time to leave. Following my instinct, I tell my friend that her and I should leave because I wasn't having a very good feeling about something. She agrees and puts away the air pump, and I kid you not, as she's putting the hose up, that same fucking white van from Walgreens zoomed up to the gas station. It all happened so fast, but I was screaming at my friend to rush in the car and dip out of there. As we hopped in the car, the van door slid open so fast, and these huge men were coming out of it. Thank God we were in the car in time, because if we would have waited a mere 30 seconds, Chances are I wouldn't be typing this. We sped out of the gas station and of course, the van started following us, till eventually we lost them. I have many theories about this situation. One of them is that they could have been sex traffickers, and they spotted me at Walgreens as an easy target. I'm a noticeably feminine gay man, decided to hunt down me and my friend. Regardless, I know their intentions were not pure at all. Be careful out there, everyone. Story number three. This event happened last year, and it's still horrifying to think about today. I was leaving work and was on my way to a friend's house. My work is on the literal edge of town. It's pretty rural and gets really dead at night. My friend lives even further from my work, and where I guess you consider to be the country area, the roads get more and more desolate the closer you get to their house. I clocked out at work, went to my car and called my friend to talk to her on the phone. I looked both ways before I exited the parking lot, but there was absolutely nobody else on that road that I could see, which was a pretty good distance. I made it a mile or so down the road when I see headlights behind me and coming up fast. It was a full-size pickup truck that had been lifted and he got so close to my car that all I could see out of the back window was a Chevy badge on his grill. I thought he wanted to pass me, so I waved out the window for him to pass using the suicide lane since the road was only two lanes there. Instead, he started laying on his horn Mind you, I'm not a slowpoke driver. I was already doing 55 and a 45, so it's not like I was inconveniencing him with my speed. I tell my friend what's happening. She tells me to just keep going, and that I'll probably leave me alone eventually. He stays glued behind me for another mile or so, occasionally honking some more. Eventually, he started turning his brights on for a few seconds, and then he started slowing down until we were a couple hundred feet apart. Then he would floor it to fly up behind me, like he was fucking rear-ending me. I'm getting more sketched out at this point. My friend is trying to calm me down, telling me just to keep driving. At this point, I'm really scared that he's going to hit me, and I wanted to get away. 
but there was no businesses open that late this far out of the city. In fact, there wasn't really any places to be open anymore, just fields and some houses every now and then. I decided to floor it and try to outrun him, figuring my Corolla might not be a Formula One car, but surely it's a hell of a lot quicker than an old pickup truck. I got up to 85 and kept an eye on him. He didn't seem to be trying to catch me. I felt a little safer and assumed he had given up, so I dropped back down to 60 and informed my friend that it worked and he was gone. I still had tunnel vision from the adrenaline. I didn't realize he was flying up behind me again until he was barreling towards me doing 85 or 90. I realized he wasn't slowing down, so I braced myself for the impact, told my friend he was about to rear end me. Instead, he cut around me, missing my car by inches, and flew around in front of me. He cut right in front of my car and slammed on his brakes, trying to get me to rear end him instead. I was able to stop in time and he started slowly continuing forward. He repeatedly stopped in the road for a few miles, almost like he was baiting me to pass him. My friend told me that her boyfriend was on the phone with the police, was keeping them updated, and for me to stay on the phone with her as long as I could. After a while, I could see my friend's street sign. She kept assuring me that her and her boyfriend were outside waiting for me. She told me to pull into the driveway, stay in the car until they were sure he was gone. He made what should have been a 10 second drive to the street, a painstaking process because he kept stopping in front of me. The next part was my fault. I instinctively turned on my blinker which let him know I was about to turn, so he immediately whipped up onto the curb to cut in front of me. My friend's house was on the corner, so her and her boyfriend were able to see everything now, but I had a bit of a ways to go before I got to her driveway. The truck stayed put in the middle of the road this time, and he wasn't moving, so I tried to go around him. As soon as I started to pass him, he floored it and cut to the left, nearly hitting my front end, blocking the road completely. I was feeling braver now, that I knew help was on the way. My friends were there, so I laid on my horn, yelled some choice words, told him to move his ass. My friend and her boyfriend had gotten to the edge of the property, where we were by then, and I guess the driver took notice of them, slowly started moving out of my way. I pulled into her driveway as fast as I could, looked out my rear view mirror to see him slowly driving up her driveway. I pulled into her driveway as fast as I could and looked out the rear view to see him slowly driving up to her driveway where he stopped. I couldn't see his facial features because it was so dark and he was kind of far away, but I could tell he was staring at me the whole time. My friends had gotten to my car just as he got to the driveway and I watched my friend approach the truck. I heard her say, you need to leave now. The cops are on their way. And they stared at each other for a few seconds before he slowly continued on. Her neighborhood is a giant loop. He never exited. So we felt adventurous and sneaked around the block in search of where he went while we waited on the cops. We found the truck parked at a house and returned just as the police arrived. We told the cops where the truck was, and the officer returned informing us there was no answer at the door. The man had left. Her boyfriend, who had lived there forever, nor his mother, recognized the truck of the man. And if I recall, his mother even knew the people who lived in the house the truck parked at. As far as I'm aware, he wasn't seen again. Because I'm a very small female who was alone at almost midnight. We all assume he watched me leave work. He's trying to bully me into wrecking my car so I could pull over and he could abduct me. We think once he realized the cops were involved, he parked the truck in someone's otherwise empty driveway, likely left it there to hide in a nearby field till the cops had left the area. Thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to leave a like comment, share, and subscribe for future content. Email your true scary stories to the sinful savant at gmail.com. Till we meet again, stay 
sinful.